Hey, this is Mr. Janes, and in this video we're going to be talking about arcs, central angles, and inscribed angles. Before we start the video, two important pieces of information. First, it's important that you have uh, the, the proper note sheet, this sheet with you, so you can take notes right on it. Uh, if you don't, you could use a blank piece of paper, uh, but it's going to be hard to draw all these figures, so I would recommend getting one of these note sheets from me. Second, at the end of this video, there will be no Schoology quiz, nothing like that for you to do. Just come into class. However, to make sure that you've watched it, you will have a kind of pop quiz at the beginning of class that just covers the basics of these notes. So as long as you take these notes and you understand what's going on, you should be okay. With that, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is talk about different types of arcs. Remember that an arc is just part of the circumference of a circle. For example, this right here from A to E is an arc. Or another example, this, this right here is an arc. Now, the red arc is much smaller than the blue arc, but they're both still arcs. When we talk about arcs, we measure them in degrees. That tells us how much of the circle the arc takes up. So, for example, this red arc from A to E could be, I don't know, maybe 50 degrees. Um, and then, since the circle encompasses 360 degrees, then the blue arc would be 360 minus 50, that gives me 310 degrees. All right, so those are two different arcs. And they have two different names. The red arc is called a minor arc, and the blue arc is called a major arc. A minor arc is any arc that encompasses less than 180 degrees. A major arc is any arc that encompasses more than 180 degrees, so it's going to be bigger. We also have one other kind of arc, a semicircle, and a semicircle is any arc that encompasses exactly 180 degrees, uh, formed when you have a diameter cutting across that circle, and you get exactly half the circle, that is a semicircle. Now, of course, we also have to know how to name these arcs, what to call them. So when you're naming a minor arc, you're going to use two letters. And for this red arc right here, we're going to call this arc A, E. We're going to put a little arc over the top kind of like we would for a line, but this is a curved arc. On the other hand, for a major arc, we're going all the way around. And I couldn't call this arc AE again, because then it would look like the minor arc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another point somewhere in that, in that major arc. So for this I'll use B. So I'm going to call this arc A, B, E, just like that. And let's name a semicircle too. This green semicircle right here goes from A through B into C. I'll call that arc A, B, C, just like that. So if you'd like to pause the video here and try and name at least one other minor arc, one other semicircle, and one other major arc in this circle, go ahead and give that a try. All right, so here are a few examples that you could have put down. There are many more than what I've put down, so if you have other ones, not a problem. But let me just show you where these are. So we have minor arc EDs right here. We have minor arc ECs right here. We have minor arc DC right there. And we have minor arc CB right there. As for semicircles, we have semicircle ABC right here. We have semicircle A, E, C right here. And we have semicircle B, C, oh, I'm sorry, B, A, E. That's why that second, that, that second letter is so important in semicircles and, and major arcs. They tell you which direction you have to go in. And lastly, for major arcs, we have major arc A, B, E. That's what we did before. We have major arc D, C, A, and we have major arc C, B, D. The most important thing to remember here is that while minor arcs are only labeled with two letters, semicircles and major arcs are labeled with three letters. That lets us know that we have to go the long way around the circle. Now, let's talk about central angles. In general, a central angle is an angle whose vertex is at the center of a circle and whose sides contain the radii of the circle. So for example, in the circle here, there is my center. And so angle A, O, E, 
angle AOE is a central angle. We can say that angle AOE intercepts arc AE. So when we have a central angle, like AOE, right here, and we say that it intercepts this arc, arc AE. Now, by definition, the angle of a central angle and the measure of an arc are always exactly the same. So if the central angle AOE is 60 degrees, arc AE will also be 60 degrees. We can go backwards with this too. If arc DC is 80 degrees, then the central angle DOC will also be 80 degrees. Pause the video here and try and fill in all of the other central angles and all the other minor arcs on the diagram. All right, let's fill them in. So, let's see, since this angle here is 60 and this angle here is 80, and it looks like they all should be um, supplementary, 60 plus, hmm, 60 plus 40 plus 80 equals 180. And since that angle is 40, this arc is also 40 degrees. Down here with angle BOC, that's a vertical angle to AOE, so that will also be 60 degrees. And so this arc will be 60 degrees. Lastly, since BOC is 60 degrees, angle AOB is supplementary to that first angle, so 60 plus 120 makes uh, 180. So since that angle is 120, the arc will also be 120 degrees. The most important thing to remember here is that the arc and the central angle always have the same exact measure. Let's take a look at this problem down here. Given the circle below with center C, diameter is JR and KQ, and the measure of angle RCQ is 50 degrees. Let me label that. RCQ is 50 degrees. Good. Use the definitions for central angle and intercepted arc along with the triangle properties to find each of the following. And they give us six things to find. So what I suggest you do now is pause the video and try and do A, B, C, D, E, F. All right, so let's start with A. A, the one with the measure of arc RQ. Well, here's arc RQ. And that arc has a central angle of 50 degrees, so the arc will also be 50 degrees. So 50 degrees it is. Now, arc JQ. Now, let's see. JQ, well, arc JQ will be supplementary to arc QR, which means that they need to add to 180. So 180 minus 50 leaves us with 130 degrees. So it'll be 130 degrees. C, measure of angle CRQ. Now, this is probably the trickiest one on this page because it's not a central angle, it's not an arc. Here is angle C. RQ right there. What is that? Well, remember that since already they are the same, we basically have an isosceles triangle right here. And we're trying to figure out what one of these base angles is. We know that all the angles on triangle add up to 180 degrees, so we can do this. 180 minus 50 gives us 130. So between these two base angles, we should have 130 degrees. And since in an isosceles triangle, base angles are congruent, we can just split that 130 in half and get 65. Oops, 65 degrees. So measure of angle CRQ is 65 degrees. And that was probably the trickiest one of these. D, J, Q, R. Well, J, Q, R, well, it's a semicircle. It goes from one side right to the other, uh, right, through, uh, right through a diameter. That means that's going to be 180 degrees. Semicircles are always 180 degrees. What about, what about uh, E, J, K, Q, J, K, Q? Well, that's a, that's a major arc right there. Okay. And we know from J to R is 180 degrees. And so from R to Q is another 50. So we add them together and we get 230 degrees. Sounds good. And then lastly, arc JK, okay, arc JK right here. Well, we know that QR is 50 degrees, and JK must be uh, 
it must be a vertical angle right across there. So arc JK will be another 50 degrees. Our last topic is going to be inscribed angles and arcs. So before we talked about central angles, and central angles were angles with vertices at the very center, right? But now we're going to be talking about inscribed angles. An inscribed angle is an angle with its vertex on the circumference of the circle. So let me give you an example of that. If this is a circle, okay, an inscribed angle has its vertex on the circumference, so something like this. That would be an inscribed angle. I'll give you another example. This is an inscribed angle. But on the other hand, this right here, that is not an inscribed angle. Not inscribed at all. Right? The vertex has to be on the edge or the circumference of the circle, just like it is up here in this picture. So angle A, D, B, angle A, D, B would be an inscribed angle. Now, here's why we actually care about inscribed angles so much. There's something really interesting about them. The measure of an inscribed angle is always half of the measure of the corresponding central angle right there. So let me give you an example. If I told you that angle AOB was 80 degrees, then angle ADB would always be 40 degrees. And that doesn't change no matter where I put D. Let me show you a little example. Now here in this animation we have a central angle, angle O, and we've got an inscribed angle, angle P, and it's moving around the circle. Now you notice, no matter where angle P is, that angle remains the same size. Even if, like it is here, angle P is, is kind of, looks kind of small, and it's not even, even in the interior of O, it's still the same size. And it's still one half of whatever angle O is. So again, if angle O was something like uh, 100 degrees, then angle P would be only 50 degrees. If we wanted to write a formula for that, we could write something like um, angle AOB equals 2 of angle ADB. Now, we're not really going to need a formula for it, but in case you wanted to write one down, there it is. Go ahead and try the next three problems, 1, 2, and 3. I'll pause the video here. And then unpause it when, you, when you're ready to uh, take a look at the solutions. All right, let's take a look. For number one, it gives us that this arc right here is 200 degrees. Now, we said that an inscribed angle, like this one right here, would be half of whatever that is. So that is 100 degrees. Let's take a look at the next one. We've got an inscribed angle here that is 70 degrees, which means that this arc is going to be double that, or 140 degrees. The third one's a little trickier. We've got an inscribed angle here that is 105 degrees. That means that this arc right here will be double that, or 210 degrees. Since a circle adds up to 360 degrees, this right here is 360 degrees minus 210 degrees, which leaves us with uh, 150 degrees. And since this angle right here is an inscribed angle, it'll be half of whatever this is, which leaves us with 75 degrees. On the other side of our notes, we've got four extra practice problems. Now, if you'd like to take some time to practice problems, I would strongly recommend it, because you'll have a quiz on these kinds of problems when we come into class on uh, our next class. I'm not going to go over these specifically, but pause the video here, and in just a few seconds, you'll see the answers pop up. Check to see if your answers line up with what's here. All right, so here are the solutions to problems 1, 2, 3, and 4. At this point, you should be feeling pretty good about central inscribed angles. Remember, there are three big things you need to remember for our, our video quiz tomorrow. Number one, how to label or how to name a major and minor arc and a semicircle. Number two, the fact that a central angle is the same degrees as the uh, intercepted arc. And number four, that an inscribed angle is half the size of the intercepted arc. See you tomorrow.